All right, welcome to my dumb experiment. In this experiment, I set up quote unquote malicious QR codes to see how many people would scan these codes. Over the course of five days, I got a total of uh, 16 people, not that many people. These codes redirected to a website, dboodad.win, informing individuals that they got dboodad, as you can see on my shirt. Uh, and really just overviewing the dangers of QR code scanning. Well, things that you don't know you're scanning. So in this video, let me tell you how I set up this experiment, how many scans I got per day, and maybe more of an advanced attack called QRL jacking in a demo that I'm going to do. So let's start from the beginning. I just learned what quishing was. It's literally QR code phishing. Threat actors can create QR codes and then use them to either bypass email filters on phishing emails, impersonate brands by redirecting users to their particular phishing pages, or even hijack user account sessions using QRL codes. QR codes are all around us, especially since COVID. We've seen restaurants use them, stores, TV commercials, and many more venues. Knowing all this, I thought to myself, how could I test this effectiveness of quishing myself? Well, uh, by posting flyers all around my local area to see who I would exactly catch. And this is exactly what I did. To make this experiment effective, I had three things to do. I had to generate a QR code, I had to create a static website that redirects users, and I had to print some paper flyers. I started with the website. Using a previously registered domain, dwoodah.win, I decided to set up a free Cloudflare pages website using GitHub to serve my static HTML page. For the web page, I included the infamous dwoodah logo as well as a small message informing users on the dangers of scanning random QR codes. Next was the paper flyers or quote unquote lures. So I decided to create three different types of paper flyers. One was a blank page with a little scan me code. The second was a free lottery ticket impersonating my local state's uh, lottery ticket organization. This is rather dumb and obvious. And then I'm kind of proud of myself on this one. You had a free car wash uh, with a popular car wash service around my local area. With these paper flyers, I had to proceed with caution. I didn't want to get in trouble impersonating these brands' logos or their names, so I made sure to modify their logos or even just use their color schemes. Uh, and I also realized that when I was creating these paper flyers, this was kind of a mean thing to do. Like, you know, you're getting a free car wash or a free lottery ticket you scan, and then it's just dibuda. Like, who wants that? Uh, and so I was contemplating whether I yeah, should even create this video because I, I don't want to come off as being like some some sort of jerk. Um, but I decided to proceed forward with it as a more of an uh, awareness campaign of realizing that, you know, you always need to make sure that, well, or be aware of this attack vector. Now, you also may be thinking here, uh, Grant, you're, you're OPSEC. You just literally gave up your state's location, like, you know, regional car wash. And my response is I'm one Google search away from seeing my general location. So I just decided to proceed forward. To transition to the final thing I needed, it was a QR code. And during my research, I learned that there are two types of QR codes, dynamic and static. As the name suggests, a static QR code is just going to redirect you to a website a dynamic QR code can be changed uh, so that it will redirect you to various websites, even if you're using the same QR code. When you scan a QR code on your phone, the URL will typically pop up on your phone's camera to show where it's going. This is good. Uh, but I realized that this was going to be an issue deceiving people in my end because my domain is dwoodah.win, not a free car wash. So. Uh, I decided to sign up for a service called QR Code Generator by Bitly so that when generating these QR codes, it, re it starts with redirecting you to a website called qrcode.de and then with this, it will actually redirect you to dbuda.win. This makes it look like something that's more generic rather than an obvious domain name. And in addition, this allowed me to track how many people scanned the QR code. Now this means they did have to click on that particular link. It wasn't just scanning and then not doing anything. After laying the foundations of my experiment, it was time. It was time to put up these local flyers around my local area. So I printed the flyers. I looked like a lunatic as I was going around with uh, tape and 
flyer papers on my daily run, people probably were like looking at me like, why is this kid doing this stuff? And to that I say, yes. So I tried not to look conspicuous, but you know, this was like during rush hour traffic. I'm sure people were looking at me as being an idiot. I attempted to place the flyers around high traffic areas with pedestrians. Uh, so I, I hung them up on trails and stoplights uh, where pedestrians maybe are exercising, running, uh, riding bikes. And uh, I made sure to put three of each of the flyers out there. Uh, and that was it. I laid the foundations. It was waiting time. So over the course of five days, like I said, 16 people. So let's just see what the results actually look like. All right, so up on QR code generator, I signed up for the free 14 day trial and I was able to uh, go ahead and get this QR code. As you can see, it has 16 total scans. dbu.win is where it redirects. If we drill into the details, it gives you a little bit more uh, information on you know, the who scanned, wh uh, which devices were scanned, and the timeline. So it appears that April 25th, during my five-day experiment, had the most with 10 total scans. And you can see the scans by top cities, and here they are. Uh, I don't think that, that that's very accurate. And this is basically what you get with a dynamic QR code. So very anticlimactic results here. Now, during my research of quishing, I stumbled upon a more advanced attack that actually hijacks a user's session and allows attacker to take control over that user account. And this attack is called QRL jacking. If you are a user of popular applications, such as Discord, that's the one that comes to mind for me, you may have noticed that some websites and applications give you an option to sign in with a QR code. Now, this QR code is nothing more than just a session token. So QRL jacking takes advantage of this process by performing a session hijack uh, with that login with the QR code so that the uh, attacker is able to take control over that user's account. While I was conducting my research and just looking into how QR jacking works, I stumbled upon a, an open source project called Evil QR by uh, Kuba Gretzky, the creator and founder of Evil Jinx 2. Okay, so up on the GitHub page of Evil QR, like I said, this was the author of Evil Jinx. So this is a high quality tool. It was released July of 2023, so relatively new. And now going through these instructions, you can see that here are the following websites that are supported. Uh, I proceeded to go through these instructions and one of the steps is to actually have you download and install a browser extension for Google Chrome. After following the instructions on GitHub, you will basically run a small little web server that's going to impersonate the uh, attacker's domain. So right now I'm just using my local address here. Switching over to Google Chrome, uh, I have a few tabs open. One is the page for wherever you're trying to sign in. So for example, I'm using Telegram here. This is how you can sign in with a QR code. And if we go ahead and just refresh this, new QR code will pop up. And you're going to see this icon on the top right. And this is Evil QR. If you click this, it's going to basically capture this specific QR code uh, sign in. And it's going to upload this to a phishing website. And now, like I said, in my case, it's going to be my local address. And it appears that since the release of this particular tool, um, it's, it hasn't had much support. So up on the screen here is what the phishing website should look like. So it actually dynamically changes the colors, the color scheme. Uh, but for some reason, I could not figure out how to render that particular phishing website. It does appear other users also have had issues. If we actually take a look at the content here, you're going to see that this is an image. And so what I've done is basically copied all of this content here, this base 64 encoded content. And if you go to a base 64 to image decoder, we can see See that this is the particular QR code that has been captured. Now, these QR codes uh, are typically only valid for 30 seconds or a, a, only a certain amount of time. So really, the attack scope is pretty limited here. Um, and you would have to basically get a user to sign in with their phone on 
this particular QR code in order for you to control their accounts. Uh, and so it, 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 the complexity or uh, relative ease is pretty high, but it is an attack vector nonetheless. So overall, quishing, QRL hijacking, these are interesting attack vectors. Um, I think that the severity of quishing in particular is limited as most users with scanning QR codes are probably just going to go to a restaurant menu. Um, but if they are entering their credentials into a phishing page, that's just another way that attackers can gather credentials. So another Dibuda experiment in the books, uh, there is Dibuda shirts available if you want those. I don't know. And uh, well, until the next day, have a good day. You know what that means.